John, you talked about it during the preseason. There was a point in the second half where Rob went into the lane and scored. You turned to your guys on the bench and you said, that's random basketball. Could you define that for us and for the fans? What, what exactly do you mean by random basketball? When you have five guys, really more than that, that can all pass, dribble, and shoot, you can play random. When you have two or three, you can't. You got to have five. Um, it's kind of like um, you have five three-point shooters. You know what you would do? Shoot a lot of threes. And so I even said it after the game. You know, we played random the whole second half. Ran two or three things. Everything else was random. And random is we are spacing the court and we're playing off of one another. That's random basketball. So spacing wide, there's actions that will happen, three guys together, um, two guys together. So uh, defensive effort tonight seemed really solid. Obviously, Reed, though, played really well, too. What did you like about his ability to disrupt New Mexico State? He and Rob, I mean, DJ played good defense, too. He just wasn't as di disruptive. Reed and Robert both. You have two guards. You have three that can guard the ball. That's a really good sign. Because if you can't guard the ball, you can't play. You can't, your defense is done before you start. We guarded the ball pretty good, but those two are really disruptive. Reed played great, did good stuff. Um, Robert played. Robert has two or three, like what in the world, but as long as it's not five or six. If it's five or six, I'm going to have to take him out. I told him I'm fine with one or two because he can't help himself. But I'll tell you that he creates space for himself and his teammates as good as anybody I've coached. All three of those guys, especially Reed and Rob, it seemed like really pressured the ball on the ball, reaching in a lot. What gives you the confidence to let them do that without fouling? Because we got seven footers on the way who will be in the lane, and if you try to beat us on a dribble, we'll have a big guy in there. John, congratulations on adding another victory to Kentucky's all-time win total. I think you still lead Kansas by seven games. How important is that to you to keep Kentucky? How important is it to the program to stay in that position? Um, you know, we are – I'm trying to get these kids to take all that kind of stuff off their plate and just learn to play. Here, here's my new – that I've been riding real hard because of all these young kids. We're trying to help them develop habits and not break old habits. Those aren't – they're there. We're just trying to make these new habits be more dominant than those old habits. Uh, that's Justin spinning. Like spinning, you can't spin like that. You, you got to stay facing. And if you can't, then back out. But you cannot spin. Had three turnovers today spinning. So, but that happens in these games. And the more that you put on their plate, the less they can, one, play, play random, because random means you got to be really unselfish. Can't have one guy try to dribble it 12 times. Um, yeah, we want to do that. We want our fans to take pride in what we've been able to do. See, the, the other side of it is I don't want them to have to compete with a five-year period that was like maybe never done before and then try to compete against that or compete against something else. Let's just compete against ourselves and let's see how good we can be. Now, I, I come back to um, we rebounded today because the guards rebounded. Robert got five. Reed had five. Uh, Antonio stuck his nose in there a few times. And it's going to be who we're going to have to be. Last year, we had one of the best rebounders in a generation. Like, we may never see that in our lifetime again, what we saw for the two years that uh, Oscar was here. Now we got to do it a little different. One, we got to block out. And that means everybody. And that means we got a gang rebound, stuff like that. So I kind of 
walked around your question, but yeah, we, we want to do that for the fans, but I'm trying to get us to think about us playing against ourselves, how good we can we be, how do we get these other habits to be the dominant habits um, that we're trying to play with. Cal, uh, Coach Hooten said that you guys were pretty amazing in, in transition, and that one of the reasons he thought you were so dangerous was that most of the time you plan on one or two guys who can bring the ball up, but you guys have so many different options to push it. Yeah, we, uh, the way we practice, the people that have watched us, it's, it's, you're getting in shape by how we're playing. And a lot of our drills are you, you got to sprint. You're not running. Robert took off one time and went down the right side. We threw it to him, shot a layup. You think about it, boom, boom, up, layup. And their whole bench was screaming. And so we can play that way, but you got to really run. And you ready? You got to throw it to them when they run. If you don't throw it to them, they won't run. They'll stop running. So, you know, every team we play, like even uh, this team came in in New Mexico State in the first half, kept themselves hanging around. It's everybody we play. They make shots. They do things. They come in excited. We just got to keep the pressure on and then create a gap at some point. Um, and I thought we did that. But I thought we did it with the guard disrupting their offense, the guards. Reed, Robert, even DJ. DJ did a good job in the pick and roll defense. But Rob was kind of blowing things up. You know what I'm saying? Jumping high side. And and then Reed was just Reed Reed's may have the best hands of anybody I've coached. I mean, his feel to get blocking balls and he was really good today. Really good. <clears throat> Uh, John, speaking of those seven footers coming, any any updates on those guys? Um, I don't have anything. Uh, um, Adu has a, a um, he had a headache, so it'll be a day to day thing with him. And now, um, you know, going through the process with Z, but he was sick four days. This kid lost ten pounds. Are you kidding me? I mean, I'm saying you got buzzer luck, kid. I mean, now, so whether he'd be eligible or not, I don't know if he could play Friday. He hadn't practiced for five, six days. Um, I think Aunt, uh, uh, Aaron is ahead of Ugana by two weeks. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. But he's ahead of him. He's jumping and doing stuff. He's probably still probably a week, two weeks away from trying to, you know, practice and be with us. John, with all the new guys you have, was there a point earlier in the year where you said we will be a random team next year and you went out and recruited to that? No, I recruit the best players we can get and then we figure out how we're going to play. And there, you, this is a crazy one. There's not one way to do this. So you got to do it this way. There's not one way. You look at your team and you say, what's the best way for them to play? And normally you guys know it takes me time. We had Toronto, so I had a head start. I had a little look at this and how we're trying to do this. Um, I like five out. Why didn't you do it last year? What would that have meant? Say it. Oscar's out there. Now, you know who led us in assist? Are you watching the game? Trey did. Oscar wasn't that guy. Oscar, historical rebounding, we'll never see again. Now we're different, so we'll play different. How about that? I mean, it's just what we do every year. We have a new team, and we try to figure it out as we go. Um, what I like is these guys are trying and will listen and will be will coach. And then I told the staff, they're going to do whatever we tell them. It's unbelievable. So let's make sure we're telling them the right thing because <laughs> they're doing what we're saying um, and they're trying. And we got some dogs. I, I said at the beginning of the game, what I was just, you can't do this. Antonio didn't get any looks for six minutes, five minutes. He can't. He's too good a shooter. 
That means someone drive down and find him. We don't have to run plays. He'll move to get free, but you got to keep an eye on him. So, but again, we, we only had six turnovers, guys. And we're playing fast. And three were by one guy. Think of that. Why? All these guys can dribble, pass, and shoot. You're not going to have a whole lot of turnovers if that you, you have two that every the, the ball squirts out. We don't have that, and that's why we'll do it. And that's a team, and I know coaches just getting started with them, but that's a team that is disruptive. They try to deny wings. They try to do different things to be disruptive. That's his history. Last year, his team was in the top 3% defensively, like holding people to ridiculous numbers. So he's going to do that where he is now. It's just going to take him time. Cal, you kind of touched on it a little bit in, in this, this last answer, but with having so many guys who can dribble, pass, and shoot, and the way that you guys seem to be able to heat up so quickly offensively, do you think this team has the potential to be one of the best offensive teams that you've had here? The 2012 team was pretty good offensively, and the 15. Yeah, I say they're one of the best. John, with uh, Reed being a legacy player, it feels like every time he touches Say it again. With Reed being the legacy player that he is, it seems like every time he touches the ball, the crowd kind of buzzes. Can you just talk about the impact that has on this building? And Were you guys watching the game? Do you know what adjustment I made at halftime? I love this because you guys have no idea yet. You will tell me how to coach and what I should be doing and all that stuff, right? So what adjustment did I make in the second half? I love this. I'm not going to tell you. It was a tweak. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. That's too bad. Look at the tape. You'll figure it out. Thanks, Coach. I got to go do this radio out here, so sorry. Have a nice